Hi folks, this is Mark Armitage here and I just wanted to take uh, a short period of time to give you a very short sort of part 1B about the iron preservation hypothesis uh, for the presence of these dinosaur tissues that are uh, supposedly 68, 70 million years old and the hypothesis uh, that uh, Dr. Mary Schweitzer and her team have come up with to explain uh, how these are here. Now, uh, I'm going to open comments for this short video. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of evolutionists uh, and long agers uh, were very upset that they could not reply to uh, video one, iron one, uh, and so, so I'm going to open this up for comments. Uh, however, I'm not going to engage anyone in the commentary. As I mentioned to you, uh, the, the vitriol has been very high, the uh, lack of sensibility and civility, the name calling, uh, to me is at an all-time high. So, so I'm just not going to answer it for this video, but uh, you, my friends, who, uh, who support this work, it's time for you to step up and uh, you can answer uh, any of the commentary that comes along. Uh, however, I am going to monitor uh, the commentary and I reserve the right to just erase somebody's comments uh, just out of hand. So, uh, so be civil folks, add to the discussion, uh, don't just copy and paste uh, things from the papers that are out there, but uh, add to the discussion, sign to the discussion and your comments will be allowed. Now, now, as mentioned previously, uh, the sample that was used, or one of the samples that was used, for uh, the iron preservation uh, hypothesis was uh, the T-Rex femur that was collected in Hell Creek, Montana. And, and uh, as I mentioned to you, that bone, or those parts of the bone, were out of the ground for eight years, eight years out of the matrix, out of that specific soil, uh, the soil chemistry, the soil environment, uh, all of the microbes and, uh, and uh, fungal bodies and plant roots and rodents and insects, <clears throat> excuse me, all the things that were present, including the water uh, present, the, the, the uh, moisture in the ground, uh, the freeze-thaw cycle, the hot temperature during the summer. Uh, so these specimens were isolated uh, from those conditions for eight years and we're in a laboratory and of course we raised certain questions in the last video about uh, about uh, how those were handled and uh, how that might have changed uh, those specimens over that eight year period. I think this is significant. Uh, I don't think you can take a bone out of the ground for eight years, have it in a completely different environment and have it not be changed at all by your uh, handling of it, your storing of it, your putting it in uh, different reagents, etc., drying it out. And so <clears throat> I don't think these specimens uh, were untouched, as it were, by the conditions that they were in in the laboratory for eight years. And so this raises a lot of questions. But I do think I have a, a, a pretty good explanation uh, that, that can explain the presence of these iron uh, particles, the iron particles, all around the outside of some of these vessels. And uh, here's a couple of pictures of Mary Schweitzer's uh, thin sections of these vessels. And the iron particles are round about. I just want to show these to you. Okay, so here you see a picture. This is from uh, the 2013 Iron Paper by Schweitzer et al. And this is the T-Rex blood vessel that they've thin sectioned. And you can clearly see that all the iron filaments are adsorbed or uh, attached to the outside layer of the vessel and not on the inside. This one is a, a thin section of the vessel wall of Brachylophosaurus canadensis from the same paper. And again, you see the iron particles adsorbed or, or attached to the outside layer. Now, you would expect them to be on the inside because that's where the blood flows. But here, they're only attached to the outside of the vessel. And I think I have a pretty good explanation for why all of these iron particles, these iron filaments, are adsorbed to the outside of these vessels. Now, now iron, as we talked about in the last video, loves to form iron oxide. Fe2O3, a very well-established, well-known chemical reaction with iron in the presence of oxygen with water. And, uh, and, and so rust, rust forms readily uh, on iron in the presence of oxygen and water, as we discussed. Iron likes water, it likes moisture, it likes to form Fe2O3 compounds in the presence of moisture. And so, 
Again, this is a very established uh, chemical reaction that we understand. Now the matrix, the soil uh, at Hell Creek uh, is full of iron. We know iron is one of the, is the third most abundant mineral on the earth. And so we know this. Now silicon is also, or silica, silica dioxide, which is glass, silica is also uh, very, very abundant. In fact, it's more abundant than iron, and so it's a mystery why these bones, if they, and they are bones as we talked about, they're not fossils, why they're not silicified uh, with silica having been in the ground supposedly for 68 million years. Now, silica is six times more abundant than iron on the earth. Uh, and so it would have six times the opportunity uh, to turn these bones into hard stone, solidify the bones and turn them into hardened stone like quartz uh, or granite or something of that nature. So what, we don't see that. We see these bones as bones, as we discussed before, not solidified. Nevertheless, iron is abundant in the Hell Creek Formation. And the, the ground there, the matrix, the soil there, is moist, as I've showed in some of my pictures uh, previously. The bones that we pull out of there, you put them in a plastic bag, and, and all the moisture forms uh, <clears throat> on the inside of the bag. And so we know there, the, the moisture content is very high in matrix or soil from the Hell Creek Formation. And so uh, while they're in the ground for the supposed 68 million years, they're stable. They've stabilized over time. You know, maybe they do continue to their decay over time. Why they're not hardened fossils is anybody's guess. I think it's because they're not that old. Nevertheless, <clears throat> they're in this soil, they're in this matrix, which is stable. And so now we have, all of a sudden, specimens taken out of this stable environment, this stable matrix, and they're in a laboratory uh, for eight years. And again, we've raised uh, questions about the conditions in the laboratory. What were those conditions like? And so uh, one thing is for sure, and that is that the conditions in the laboratory were probably a lot drier than the conditions in the matrix at the Health Creek Formation where you had rain and snow and ice, you know, melting and percolating through those uh, sandy soils, those uh, sandstones, and, uh, which were encasing these bones. So the bones were very moist at Hell Creek, and now they're in the lab for eight years before the iron preservation experiment takes place. So I think we have an alternate explanation for how these iron particles came to be around the vessel walls. And uh, you're going to see some diagrams that we're going to show you. We've made some drawings to sort of illustrate uh, this, but we'll go through this in detail. And we think it's a good alternate explanation for why these tissues, these vessels, which uh, Dr. Schweitzer and her team thin-sectioned, and she shows all these iron particles adsorbed to the outside of the vessel. We think we have a good explanation for this. So here is our rendition of a vessel wall, a thin-sectioned vessel wall, in the matrix with all the iron filaments surrounding it. This is while the matrix is moist, but then it dries out. And as it dries out, some of these iron particles move toward the only source of moisture uh, in the matrix, which is the vessel wall. And eventually, they just adsorb completely onto the surface of the vessel wall as a result of the conditions in the laboratory. Now, can Mary Schweitzer assure us that this migration of iron particles uh, to the surfaces of these vessels did not occur? Uh, can she assure us that these iron particles were not attracted to moisture in the, so in, the, in the vessels from the soil, so they migrated from around the outside of the vessels onto the surface of the vessels? Can Mary Schweitzer and her team uh, assure us with a, a cogent explanation that this simply did not occur? We'd like to see that. Now here's a thin section of a vessel wall. Uh, that illustrates uh, both of our points uh, exactly. On the outside of this vessel, you can see the iron particles uh, adsorbed to the outside surface. And then there are some inside as well, but they look like they're restricted to one specific area. But if we rotate the picture 45 degrees, we can see a band of iron filaments, which is probably where the blood settled and pooled and decomposed over time. Once again, thank you for supporting our work. We appreciate the support. 
if you search for uh, uh, soft dinosaur cells project those four words soft dinosaur cells project uh, our GoFundMe program should come up or you can go on to GoFundMe and search for soft dinosaur cells project hey we need your support uh, we're up against very expensive labs that are pumping out papers constantly and uh, we're one little lab uh, trying to do this work and publish and get published and so this this takes money our, our electron microscopes uh, need to be on service contracts our imaging systems are starting to fail and so we need your support not for salary we don't take salaries or anything like that all the work we do is free we don't charge for it we don't make any money at it let's put it that way <clears throat> but the, the equipment that we have we, be, we believe is on loan to us from God and we need your help to keep this equipment running and to keep doing the work that we're doing. So thank you for your support. Please pray for our project and tell all your friends about it. We need your support. Thank you.